Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to The Walk. Today is Thursday, May 4th, and today we are in Romans 8. We're talking more about that, um, that freedom of, that we have in our relationship with Christ. So in Romans 8, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. What does that mean? What it means is when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you are not condemned because of your sin. Is the sin still there? Absolutely. None of us are perfect. We all goof up. We all have sin in our lives. However, we are not condemned by it because we've accepted that final atoning sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross. He made that very final sacrifice taking away our sins forever, and then he conquered sin when he rose from the dead. Because of that, because of the grace that comes from the throne room of God, we do not have to be condemned by our sin. Verse 2, for the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. Now this sounds very confusing. It sounds like it's kind of talking in circles. There's two laws. There's the law that comes from the Holy Spirit, and there's the law that was given in the Old Testament. There, it's talking about two different laws. The law that comes from the Holy Spirit provides that freedom. It gives you that freedom because you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. The law from the Old Testament is a bunch of rules that you'll never be able to be good enough for. And because of that, they had to atone. They had to have um, a sacrifice, a lamb, or whatever animal they could afford that um, fell within the rules. Every year, they would go to the temple and sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice because they never measured up well enough. But under this law of the Holy Spirit, it's that one sacrifice that happened on the cross, and it's your faith in Jesus Christ that allows you to partake in that sacrifice and allow that sacrifice to remove your sin. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Now there's a lot there. That's just verse 3, so let's break this down. So God did what the law could not do. Remember, those Israelites were begging God to give them a list of rules to follow. And God said, no, you don't want that. And they kept begging him and begging them, begging him. And so God gave him that, God gave them that list of rules. And it, because of their flesh, they could not keep every single one of those rules. However, because God sent his son who looked just like the rest of us, <clears throat> who looked like he was just as capable of sin as the rest of us, but yet never once was he, um, did he sin, he was able to pay the price for that final sacrifice. Um, verse 4, in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk according to the flesh, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. So that righteousness that was supposed to happen is now happening because we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and because we are walking through the Holy Spirit. We're not following our flesh. We're following the Holy Spirit with that relentless obedience. Do we mess up sometimes? Absolutely we do. But those sins are already paid for. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Now, I'm going to stop right here. What are the things of the flesh? It's anything that does not glorify God, anything that is sinful. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. It's all about where your mindset is. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you keep your mind focused on glorifying God and living through relentless obedience in following that Holy Spirit. And when you do that, you don't give in to the flesh nearly as much. You start to notice that those sins are less often. For it's to set the mind on the flesh is death. It separates you from God. But to set the mind on the spirit is life 
and peace. We know that God wants what's best for us. And if we're following the Holy Spirit, we're going to have all those blessings that God has set aside for us. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. But those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So we can't please God if we're following that flesh. But now we're about to see what happens when we follow the Holy Spirit. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If, in fact, the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. You have the same righteousness as Jesus Christ just because of your faith. We have to be aware of the fact that you're either on one side of the fence or the other side of the fence. Either you've given your life to Christ or you've not given your life to Christ. And when you've given your life to Christ, your mind is set on the things of the Spirit. Have a wonderful day. God bless and keep walking the walk.